Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and let's get started with part two of the DAS Importer add-on series. So last week I talked about how to install the Diffeomorphic DAS Importer add-on, the difference and limitations between that add-on and the official DAS bridge, how to pose the imported rig that comes with the model and how to save different poses in Blender. Also, if you'd like to learn how to use DAS and how to pose in DAS, I have a 23 minute video covering that topic as well. As promised, in this video we're going to go through how to internally save poses and facial expressions in DAS, how to import a model that animates from pose A to pose B, and also how to add cloth simulation into the mix, and lastly how to edit skin textures. I'll also briefly touch on my workflow for creating rough clothing using both the garment tool and simply cloth add-on. All right, there's lots to go through, so let's get started. So let's start with Daz. In order to have a character animate from pose A to pose B, we need to utilize the timeline in Daz. If you don't already see it, drag the yellow arrows at the bottom of the viewport up and make sure you're in timeline mode and not animate light mode. Your character needs to start in either an A pose or a T pose, that's totally up to you. Let's select our character and hit create keys down here. Skip ahead to let's say keyframe 15 and either pose your character or import a pose. I'll import a pose for just now. Hit create keys again and when you're happy with the pose and if you scroll between keyframe 0 and keyframe 15, you'll see the character move from pose A to B. Perfect. Note, the reason we're doing this is because our intention is cloth simulation and it's much easier to make clothing when our character is in a neutral position. And once the cloth simulation and animation both start at the same time, the cloth will move with the character's motions. Another advantage of creating the clothing while your model is in a neutral position is that you can save the project before any simulation is applied and if you get another project where you need to use the same dress for example but you need another model with another pose well all you need to do is just import your new model and replay the simulation. So you might look at that previous result and think, wow, that looks good. Well, cloth sim combined with animation can be really finicky and you'll have to do a lot of tweaking with the settings to get it right. You might get flipped normals. No, not, not these guys, these kinds of normals. You might get intersecting geometry and so on. So just don't expect perfect results, okay? <laughs> One thing you can do though is to further polish the cloth in sculpt mode by merging all of the modifiers and heading into sculpt mode to just kind of fix things up a bit, you know? Alright, now that we have our animation, if you can even call it that, let's go over saving poses. If you like your pose and would like to save it, just select your character, head over to File, Save As and Pose Preset. Describe the action and hit save. Hit the little arrow and here we have a few options. Open hip, hidden and both pose controls. If you want to save everything, including the facial expression, just go ahead and press accept. However, if you want to save just the arms, the legs, the face and so on, you need to isolate whatever you want to keep. So if it's the face, for example, unhook everything except the head. Hit save and if you now navigate to my library, presets and poses, it should all be there. Note that if you're saving a pose or facial expression, it will screen grab the current state of the report. So if you're doing a facial expression especially, I'd advise to zoom into the face so it's easier to see that from the list of thumbnails. Right, with that out of the way, let's import the animation in Blender. Go to frame 1 of the timeline and hit save. Also hit export basic data, which is the script we installed in the previous video. If you don't have that, please go to part 1 and see how you install both the DAS script and the Blender add-on. 
Alright, let's head over to Blender and with the add-on open in the end panel to the right, let's hit import DAS file. Choose your DUF scene and voila! Open the NLA, which stands for Nonlinear Animation, down here. And when you scrub, you'll notice, ah, the animation isn't here. <laughs> That's because we need to import the pose as an action. Hit Import Action under Posing in the Add-on tab and choose the same file. There we go. To make this a proper action, we need to hit the Push Down Action button and this creates a new strip. So what we can do now is move this strip around. This is perfect because we ideally want the character to be in a neutral pose for a while before the animation starts, like I mentioned earlier. But you'll probably notice that the facial expression hasn't been included. In my previous video, I mentioned that facial expressions don't get imported, so if you want to include this, we need to do this at the start of the project. So if you already spent a lot of time on your facial expression, please don't start cursing at me. I have a solution, I swear. <laughs> Back in Daz, let's save the facial expression as a pose preset. Go to frame 0 and drag the preset onto the model. Resave the file, including the basic data. And back in Blender, let's re-import and repeat the previous steps. Woo! The animation is now complete! So to reiterate, if you plan on using this method, remember to always save the facial expression along with your neutral pose before saving, exporting the basic data and importing the DAS file into Blender. Great, so now that we have our little animation that has been offset to allow for a class simulation, let's get into making clothes. I will not be going into detail on how to use these add-ons, as that requires a completely separate video, but if you guys want that, I'm, I'm happy to oblige. In short, the workflow I tend to follow is starting out with Garment Tool, because with Garment Tool I create the cloth pieces with Bezier curves. I'll be using a dress here as an example, and I actually found these patterns of this dress online and basically just trace the curves to match each individual pattern before setting it up to match the model. Once the patterns are finished, I attach all of the seams that are supposed to be sewed together using the nifty tools in Garment Tool. I'll have to go over and create new seams in Simply Cloth later on, but this is just for the purpose of generating the garment mesh because right now it's a bezier curve, which isn't technically a mesh with polys that you can use for a cloth simulation. So once the mesh has been generated, I hide the bezier curve pieces, adjust the bend of the clothing. This is just there for the purpose of making the cloth kind of wrap around our model better. And I merge all of the modifiers. I then head over to Simply Cloth, hit Create Cloth, and remove the old sewings in edit mode. I re-sew the edges, make sure to add a collision to our model, and start testing out different settings in order to get the best results. Note that both of these add-ons aren't free and combined they come to about $71 or $57 if you want just the standard version of Simply Cloth. But I mean compare that to Marvelous Designer where a monthly subscription costs $50. It's definitely a much cheaper alternative. But I also want to reiterate that Blender does not handle model animation and cloth sim at the same time like super optimally. So if your PC is old, this will probably take a good toll on it. It will probably crash often. My PC is now fairly powerful and still struggles with this, so just don't expect miraculous and fast results like you would in Marvelous Designer, which was specifically designed for this sort of thing. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that there are two versions of Simply Cloth. The Pro version ships with this sewing option, which merges cloth seams together so you don't get these like ugly gaps in between sewed patterns. 
If your intention is sewing clothing together in Blender, I'd highly advise for you to get the Pro version. It comes with a lot of cool features as well. Links to both add-ons will be in the description and pinned comment below. I see three main methods of designing clothes for still image creation, which is my main expertise. If you're going for something super simple like a poncho, a cape or a dress, the previously mentioned method would work quite well. However, if you have a long animation with lots of movement or a very dynamic and intricate pose, or for example if you're working with a game character, I think the better method would actually be to maybe just apply all of the cloth modifiers when the character is in neutral, after the simulation has been playing for a while of course, and then to attach that clothing to the rig, just like the model. So when you then play the animation, it moves along with the character and your animation will play much faster. But, as you've probably noticed, we've gotten rid of the cloth simulation, so results will be way less accurate and will just be calculated based on the armature's limbs positions. As for the third option, here's a video that taught me a clever trick about how to do cloth simulation for some parts while having other parts rigged to the armature. This is a blend between the two other options and I believe this to be the most ideal, the best of both worlds. I'll link the video down in the description and comments below along with some other useful resources. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, if your animation is playing super slowly, it may be due to the fact that the subdivision modifier is still turned on on your model. So if that's the case, turn it off in the modifier panel while you're playing around with simulation stuff. Whew, so having gone through all of that, I hope this video has opened your eyes to the possibility of cloth creation utilizing the DAS Importer Blender add-on. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I didn't want to go into too much depth, but rather just present the possibilities of the add-on and kind of leave the rest in your hands. There are a lot of videos and documentation on both add-ons, so test it out for yourself and just see what you can do. If you have any tips and tricks yourself, or a better way of doing things, please leave them in the comments below so other people, including me of course, can learn. And of course, I promised that for the last portion of the video, I'd show you how to edit your model's textures. It's actually very easy. Select your model, open the material properties, and navigate to the shader editor. Make sure you have object chosen and not world. And let's analyze what we have here. If you toggle viewport shading in the top right corner of the viewport, we'll get a better representation of our texture. I have the torso chosen in our material properties, so that's what we're viewing over here. In color 1, you can see that we have the option to tweak the colors here. If you want more control, you can add in a hue saturation node or an RGB curves node by hitting Shift A and choosing color or searching for it manually. And you can hook these up between multiply and base color on the line that now turns white. Whenever you're satisfied, let's choose these three boxes and hit Ctrl G. Call this something like blue skin in my case and Ctrl C, copy it. Go to the next area that would require this change like the face and Ctrl V, paste it in. Get rid of the multiply node and feed color into color 2 and then color into base color. Repeat this for the body textures that you need to be blue, like the arms, ears and legs. Done! If you want to edit the texture further, just hit the top right icon on the group and edit the skin further. You can see that if we now edit the color, all of the body parts will now be changed since they're all kind of linked up with this one group. Something to note is that the speculars and roughness around the mouth areas tend to be very off, so in order to kind of get them less shiny, we can turn the roughness up or in some cases just delete the speculars or turn it way down. 
You can also change the color of the lips, which will make it a lot darker and fit more with our blue skin. The teeth also need to be adjusted because they just come imported way too wide for some reason, like this is a Colgate commercial. So turn down the subsurface color and maybe add in a hue saturation node to decrease the brightness a bit. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. A very lengthy video, but you guys were asking for it and I hope you learned a lot from it. I'm always open to suggestions on what to tackle next and if you have tips and tricks of your own, please leave them down in the comments below. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys, bye!